The wok cemented its place in Kiwi kitchens at a time when households were starting to become very experimental with food. The phrase stir-fried replaced deep-fried as more and more of us got a little more health conscious. Home chefs were starting to cook with the many new and interesting Asian ingredients that we were seeing on the shelves in food stores. But is what cooking more than throwing a few thinly sliced vegetables and some chicken in a wok? On this episode of Food Culture, we take a look at the wok, the ultimate tool for one pot cooking. Now this week on Food Culture we explore the magic wok. Now many of us Kiwis have a wok in the kitchen in the cupboard somewhere, but do we really know much about the wok? Well today I've decided to come here to the Pearl Garden in Newmarket in Auckland to check out the experts and how they do it. They've prepared a couple of beautiful dishes, a prawn dish and a black bean dish. But what are black beans? Asian style fermented black beans are soybeans that have been dried and fermented with salt they have a very distinctive and strong flavour. Fermented black beans are sold in plastic bags in Asian markets. At home, remove the beans from the package and store in a sealed container in a cool, dark place. OK, we sort of do know a bit about the true origins of the wok, but rumour has it it was invented in Asia, right, in Asia, around the 1500s. Or oh, way back then, a long time ago anyway. We were fortunate enough to be invited into the engine room here of the Pearl Garden in Newmarket by Peter, one of the owners of the restaurant, and I tell you, these guys are experts. It is always exciting going into a restaurant kitchen. I instantly noticed that the wok was the primary cooking tool and it was being used for stir fries, steaming and poaching. And you know the phrase, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, let me tell you something, it was real hot in there. The first dish the chef prepared was the classic beef and black bean sauce. The chef had carefully prepared all the ingredients prior to cooking. The vegetables were cut into sizes to ensure even cooking times. Stage one was to rapidly fry off the beef in sizzling hot oil. Now some might think this is fattening, but when the oil is so hot, it is not absorbed into the food. The capsicum and onion are added to the dish and quickly sealed. The veggies and meat are drained and put to one side. The garlic along with the black beans and spring onions are quickly sautéed and then the beef and other vegetables are returned to the wok. Soya sauce, oyster sauce and Chinese cooking wine are added and cooked off. The dish is then thickened with a little corn flour and water. Man, that was quick. It only took about three minutes. Next, the chef prepared prawns with cashew and vegetables. Mmm, man, I love that seafood. Again, all the ingredients had been prepped. This time the chef quickly blanches the veggies that need a bit more cooking time. This doesn't take long with the heat that these guys cook with. The prawns are quickly fried in hot oil and drained.
Then all the ingredients are quickly stir-fried with the chef adding some Chinese cooking wine, stock and a little salt and sugar for seasoning. Once again, the dish is finished with a little corn flour and water to thicken the sauce and add a lovely sheen to the food. I've got to tell you, that was intense, but a couple of points I took on board. Number one, always wash the wok. Number two, heaps of heat, man, heaps of heat. Well, it's time to give this stuff a try. A couple of beautiful dishes here. First off, I'm going to try the prawn dish in the traditional noodle basket. What I like about these guys, or well, this way of cooking in a wok, is everything is quick, everything's fresh. It's, it's just beautiful. So, a uh, bit of prawn action. Here we go. Excuse fingers. Beautiful. Big favourite of mine, nice seafood dish. This next one is beef and black bean. A lot of us have tried these dishes, know about these dishes, but when you do it dead right like these guys. Mm. Very, very flavoursome indeed. All the flavours, just beautiful. Well, that's me, beautiful food. But these woks, I mean, what sort of wok should I get? I mean, are there different types, different sizes? Who should I talk to? Well, I'm going to visit a guy who sells the most woks in Auckland, and he's going to give me the inside oil. G'day guys, it's time to walk and roll. Sorry mate, that's a, that's a bad, uh, bad <laughs> gag. But I'm here with Jason, thanks for, inv uh, for the invitation from the new Gumsa. Yep. Okay, and you guys probably sell the most woks in Auckland, but I'm finding out there's a lot more to a wok than meets the eye, all different types, all different sizes. Yes. Tell us a bit about it. Right, well we've got a whole range of woks here. Um, basically we've got different sizes, yep. um, different styles of handles, yep. and different um, metallic um, substances. Okay, so different materials as well. Yeah, different materials. And they're made prepared differently. Yes, they're all prepared differently. All from China, bro? All from China, mate. Oh, that makes it that makes it right yep. to me. Authentic. <laughs> yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Authentic. The different types of wok. Okay, so they can go from, as you mentioned earlier, and I've been looking, I love this shop, man, from a sort of a 13-inch right up to this. I've got to show you this. Yes. Mate. Right. I've seen spa pools smaller than this. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's, that's basically uh, one of the... The big ones that we do, yep. it's an 80 centimetre wok and yep. you can do a big fry from one of these or a boil up. You can have a party in one you of these. You can have a party in one of these. Now, this is, this. who would use this uh, for a big family gathering or yep. big catering issues or? Mainly, uh, specifically for catering. Yeah. Um, but they also do uh, use these sort of woks a lot for um, frying. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. So you do like a big like wonton lot or um, spring yeah. rolls. Yeah. Okay, this one is what we call a hand hammered wok. Okay. Basically, it's made by hand. As opposed to? A machine milled. Okay, machine milled. Machine milled. Clean lines? Yes. As you can tell from the, the overall appearance, it's got these little milled um, spirals that go around through the wok. Yep. Um, and that's basically the milling process. Right. Um, these are generally a lot thinner and a lot lighter to use and just great for the domestic market. Okay. Okay, and um, 
What sort of steel, bro? Or what sort these, of are, these are what you call carbon steel. Okay. So they will rust if you don't look after them, but we'll yeah. get to that. Okay, Joe, that's a machined wok. Uh, what others are there? Oh, there's uh, the cast iron wok. Okay. One that we've got here. Basically, it's just made of cast iron. Yeah. It's just a different, another a different um, metallic property. Uh, do, uh, are they different? Do they hold heat different? Do people prefer yes, the one? Yes, the cast iron will hold the heat a lot better than a steel one. Yeah. Um, but they are a lot more brittle as well. So you've got to be careful that you don't sort of be too rough with them. Now, my, my nana used to say, never ever wash a teapot because of the flavour. Wash the outside with the flavour. Yeah. Um, woks, you've got to sort of break them in or do something with them? What's yeah. that? That's what we call seasoning or curing the wok. Okay. Okay, it's basically the same fundamental that you'd apply to a barbecue. Yep. Right? Um, what you essentially want to do by seasoning the wok is create a natural non-stick surface, ah. just like what we have over here. Okay, okay. And the process for that? Okay, basically it requires a bit of um, heating. So yep. basically if, if you buy a wok like this just straight off the shelf, uh, nine times out of ten they will come with a, a lacquer, yep. which needs to be scrubbed off before use. So yep. you get in there with a, a metal scorer and just scrub it off. Be, don't be gentle. Don't be gentle. Right. Abrasive as possible. Get in there with your hands. Yep. Okay, scrub it in water. Grab a, a tea towel yep. or a paper towel. Dab some oil. Brush the surface bottom and top with oil. Yep. And then just heat it with your gas flame on medium to high heat. Right. And over time, it'll start to, to change. The colour will start to change. It'll start to go a bluish colour, yep. a dark colour. And basically that's the end result. It probably mm. won't be as dark as that because that's, that's a bit older, but mm. it will start to turn, and that's what you want out of a wok. Does that contribute to flavour and, and, and stuff like yes, that? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Just got, it's got that nice sort of grilling yeah. sort of stir-fry flavour. Brilliant, mate. Okay, Jace, so I want to talk about utensils, the yes. gears to do the job. Yes. That's essential. Yeah, I reckon. But not for your wok. No, not for the wok. I reckon if we had these a couple hundred years ago, bro, we'd have yeah. more land. Well, yeah, you'd, you'd start a new revolution, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I'll just put that to the side to keep the show sure. safe. Excuse me. Okay, the basics. Right. The basics. Well, um, you've got your yep. little spatula here. Yep. Which is for stir fries. Yep. And your wok brush ah. for cleaning and your wire skimmer for uh, deep frying and, and boil ups. The wire skimmer, I need yes. one of those. Yeah, cool. This one here, I've only seen this really being used. Mind you, I've only seen what cook, cooking done um, commercially, you know, in, uh, in, in um, takeaways and restaurants yep. and stuff like that. So that's just like a bamboo. That's just a bamboo bristle yep. um, brush. Mm. Basically, you just get in there and you just give it a good Good scrub away. Yeah. Because at the end of the your cooking session, you might have a few sticky bits on the sure, bottom of your sure. surface We're you want, and you yeah, you need a bit of a, a coarse bristle to, to rub that off. Nice, nice. Yes. And that's it. And a bit of experience. Yes. I've got to tell you though, um, we've been practicing a bit at home, and you know I urge our viewers to have a go at this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's really healthy too. It is you know, healthy. And, and your kids, if your kids, if you get your kids cooking, they're going to get their five a day, their veggies, because of, of the style of cooking. Eh? Yes, and it's all, it's all very, very light eating. So when you cut your meats and you cut your um, veggies, it's all into fine strips. Yeah. So you're not doing overkill. I know. Listen to this, mate. Lately in the summer, we got the barbecue with the gas ring on the side. Yeah. So we're doing the steaks and the blah, 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 then using the wok to do a bit of a stir fry. So, you know, our culture's changing, yes, isn't it? that's right. Our food culture's it's evolving. changing. It's good, though. So for me, Mr. Middle New Zealand domestic dude, um, if you were to give me some top tips on wok cooking, right. what do you reckon? All right, well, first of all, you've got to use the right oil, okay? Ah. Basically, when you're cooking with oil, you want to use an oil that can take the heat, yep. okay? So definitely not olive oil, because ah. you'll just ruin all the, the properties of the oil with olive oil. Okay. So I recommend peanut oil, because that'll take the best heat. It doesn't have to be peanut oil, you can use canola or vegetable oil, yep. as long as it takes the heat and doesn't yeah. smoke up too much. Because we use olive oil a lot in our cooking at home, right. but it's not the best thing for it's this sort of cooking. It's not the best thing for this cooking at okay. all. Okay, that's cool. Okay. You mentioned heat, that can take the heat, that's yes. the other thing, it's got to be hot. That's it? right, it's got to be hot. You yeah. know? So when you're firing up your wok, 
let it sit there on high heat and then pour your oil in and then turn it down to medium to high yeah. and you're away. Yeah. Okay. I notice a lot of the, uh, the restaurateurs and stuff that we, we, we get around, uh, all their stuff's prepared, yes. ready to go, and they quite often will give the wok a rinse. Yes. Before. Is, what's that for? Not to confuse things? or No, it's basically just to, just to give it a good um, scrub away from between cooks. Okay. So you don't have a residue of what you're cooking before the next lot. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's a lot easier to be organised eh, if you've got all those That's things right. in place. That's right. Yeah, preparation is... is Vital. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, here's a biggie. What about, you can buy electric woks now, right. right? What do you reckon? Be honest, be honest. Well, they didn't have electricity 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so and they these don't need it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the way to go. This is the way to go. Jase, I know how versatile the wok is. You can deep fry, you can stir fry and all the rest of it. But what else can you do with a wok? Oh, you can steam with them. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's uh, one of the, the great um, versatile things that you can do with a wok. Yep. Um, we've got a 12 inch steamer over here. Which is quite a fair it's size. It's quite a fair size. And that's two two, it's two layers. You yep, can go three layers. if you like. Oh, really? Yes. yes I'm liking that's it. That's how great they are because the steam rises through it. Yep. Um, basically, anything you want in there vegetables, yep. um, meat, yep. fish, yep. shellfish. Shellfish. Anything. That works. See, this is where we sort of come together as two cultures because that's, you know, hangi steaming. Yes. You could sort of call this oriental, couldn't you, in a way? <laughs> After the break, we find out what the secret sources are for great wok cooking. One more thing I want to check out while I'm here at your great shop is soy sauce. Yes. I mean, you've got to have it, but like the dark, the light, the Chinese, the Japanese, I, I don't know. So can you help me with that? Absolutely. Okay, Jace, well, we're surrounded by the stuff. I found the soy sauce. I always get a bit confused. So many different types. Give me the good oil or oh, the good sauce. The good sauce, right. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a whole range of them. There's, um, you can differentiate the sauces by origin yep. or by the thickness or the colour of it. Okay. Um, just to give you a, a very brief rundown, we've got uh, the different shades of sauces, like your light, yep. your dark, and your mushroom dark. Mushroom dark. Mushroom dark. That's the darkest, That's is the it? real dark stuff. Okay. And that's used purely for colour. Okay. And you use light purely for taste. Okay. And then you've got um, the different ones that range from uh, different origins. You've got your Japanese yep. soy sauces, like the Kikamins. Yeah. Um, that's purely for dipping. Yeah. And then you've got your Cantonese style sauces for cooking. Okay. Okay. And that's it, really. That's eh? it, really. Yep. So, mate, I like my raw fish. So, Kikamins as good as you get. Yep. That's top of the range. Why? Well, yep. Yeah, that's it. End of story. End of story, mate. Yep. Don't look elsewhere. But for, for, for salting food or flavouring food with a sauce, what's the secret? What's the secret? Yep. Um, basically, make sure that you've got a, a good quality soy sauce that's naturally brewed. Naturally brewed? Naturally brewed. Because if it's not, what? Because it's not, it's probably salt and water. Thanks, bro. If you're stuck on a desert island, you had to eat Chinese food, what ingredients would you take with you? The essential ingredients, yep. you, you can't look past your light soy sauce yep. for flavouring, um, your oyster sauce, and your shellzing cooking wine. Cooking wine? Cooking wine. Ooh. Can you drink that? You can. Yeah. You just won't feel very good afterwards. <laughs> good on you, mate. Now, Jay, some people come into a shop like yours here, and it's all Asian, obviously, yeah. um, but we shouldn't really be daunted by the fact that everything here is written in Asian, should we? Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, most things are translated into English, yep. and if you get stuck on anything, we're always here to help. You're the best, mate. Now, I need more. Can you hang on to that, mate? No Because I'm going to grab more stuff. I was inspired. It was time for me to head home and put some of what I'd learnt into practice. I was going to prepare the classic and a family favourite, sweet and sour pork. 
Well, guys, I have to say I'm getting right into this wok cooking. It just makes sense to me. It's healthy, it's good for us, it's fun, and even blokes like me can actually rustle up a good meal. Now, the weather's turned. It's a little bit of a uh, dismal day, so I thought I'd brighten up the whānau by doing Pure's Sweet and Sour Pork, OK? Now, normally I'm used to getting the sweet and sour from the takeaways that I like, but it uh, is covered with that sort of batter, and uh, we're going to do it a bit of a different way keep it lean, keep it mean, keep it tasty, keep it fresh, and look after our pukus, okay? So we're gonna get into this, and hopefully it turns out good, because it's my first time, all right? Okay, guys, well, I've decided to use my trusty hangi cooker, because I tell you what, this thing I use for everything outdoors. It is just a winner, okay? It's never let me down. It's not gonna let me down now, there you go. Because I need lots of heat, the wok sits on there perfectly, and we're gonna cook up a really good feed, that's for sure. First up, make sure we've got plenty of heat before we add our first ingredient, which is finely chopped ginger. Get the movement. I can turn that down a bit, but I think it's about right, eh? Okay, next up, we've got some free-range pork, around about 500 grams. There's half a dozen of us to feed in this whare, so uh, we'll just whack that in there. And we've got the good sound. Nope, missed a bit. You know, this is all about learning, and what I've learned is I've actually put too much meat in my wok, for starters, and what you end up doing is stewing your meat, not sort of having it sizzling. So I've taken some out, because I've got to hear that sizzle, and I'm back on track. I will cook the other meat later though, that's for sure. So now this meat is behaving like it should, it's browning and sizzling, it sounds right, and smells even better. Okay, I've browned off all the meat, so it looks beautiful. I had a bit of a taste, it tastes beautiful. Next up is the veggies. I've got onions, carrot, and capsicum going into this, and uh, as the experts have told me, cut them into nice bite-sized chunks, and uh, the good thing is I know the kids will eat them. That's a positive, healthy. These veggies take only between three to four minutes to cook, and of course, plenty of goodness still in there, nice and crisp. Uh, you can blanch them if you haven't got enough heat in your wok, but uh, you know one of the secrets is having uh, plenty of heat in your wok, and uh, and they're looking good. Got all the right colours too for a healthy diet. It's now time to add our sauce. Now in here we have a quarter of a cup of Wadi's tomato sauce. Right, can't go wrong. A quarter of a cup of um, vinegar. You can use Chinese black vinegar to add a bit of character, and that's beautiful. And of course, some pineapple juice. Check this out. And what would sweet and sour be without chunks of pineapple? Well, depending on how much pineapple you like is how much you put in. Uh, me, personally, I love pineapple. Next up, the final stage. A little mixture, two tablespoons of corn flour, two tablespoons of water. What that does, it just thickens everything up just a little bit and gives the, gives the dish a beautiful gloss. Once that's been put in, uh, we can take it off the heat and we're ready to serve. That's it, it's got a beautiful sheen, it's all finished. It, um, it looks like the real thing. Why? Because it is the real thing. We're ready to eat. Okay guys, this is it. How have I done? Beautiful pork, all the flavours. <laughs> I'm a genius. Well, I have to say, there's going to be a lot more wok cooking around our house because it just works. You can feed the whole family. Um, it's clean, it's healthy, it's interesting, it's fun, and it tastes delicious. On Food Culture, next time we look at how methods of preserving food have carried over into our modern menus and ways of cooking. If you thought it was all about jams and pickles, you might be surprised. <laughs>